thanks for joining me. Um, I'm currently in Switzerland in my little cellar studio in my basement. Um, these are the last two paintings in a series I just completed. There are about nine paintings and I'll be showing clips throughout this video. I want to tell you how they came. It was a really tremendous experience because unlike paintings before these, they really came as a vision and I felt very much in the passive role. So a warm Tuesday on a field in the sun, me and a bunch of friends were in the north of England in Lancaster and we took a big bed sheet as a sort of picnic blanket and we lay on it, we had food, we read some books, whatever, I was reading this collection of essays here and then people sort of left one by one and at one point me and the muse for these paintings we fell asleep on this blanket and we were cuddling in the sun and there were a couple other people around us and we fell asleep for about 20 minutes you can imagine the sun beating down and there was a certain sexual energy um, and I'm not sure if it was something which helped or something which distracted. Either way, I opened my eyes and then I closed them again and what happened was the sun, as you know, if you look at the sun it, and then you close your eyes, it leaves an imprint and so it almost prints in your eye and then you can see, if you close your eyes, the inside of your eye isn't black, it's sort of maybe a, maybe a, a, a sort of a maroon, red, depending on how much light gets through your skin, maybe even bluish, and if you just looked at the light, you can see on the inside of your eyelid, projected on the inside of your eyelid from your eye, the complementary colour of whatever that may be. So, I saw the sun with the tail, because I moved my eyes obviously, and I, that's what I saw, and I saw it imprinted in my eyes. Now along with this seeing, it was a literal vision, not a vision as in something which doesn't exist, seeing something which doesn't exist for, for most people, but a vision in the very literal sense of I saw it. Along with that came an impulse, or a, a com not an impulsion, but a compulsion which really struck me and I got up in a start and went to run and find the nearest piece of uh, paper I had which was this uh, collection of essays on the art market and I opened it up grabbed a pen and I started sketching with my pen exactly what I saw and with the I, I had to note down the colours, of course, because I only had one pen. So here you can see in the paintings, this this was one of the, the penultimate one, the second to last one. You can see it's the complementary colour. This is the sun. Now these three gestures here, they're also the sun, but those I had probably seen a minute uh, before I had seen these. So these are obviously a lot clearer. The colours are usually complementary. <coughs> the weird thing was that I, and the thing I'm still trying to do is try to get the colors not to be, to, to be the same, on the same plane. So, so I've, I've done it more successfully in this painting than I have in this one. These pop too, these, they don't pop too much, but there's too much light blue here compared to what I saw. But it's something which you can see, but you can't necessarily depict in colours with the pigments, or I can't yet. So I'm really working on that. But anyway, these paintings, they came in a series. They came with their dimensions. I knew exactly the sizes, and I sketched here, and I'll show you in a second. Dark blue, light blue with the vision, and I try to remember as much as possible. Uh, and I knew exactly the style. It was going to be this sort of brush-strokey, crisscrossy, jagged, 
maybe impressionistic uh, style which I had first done with my two massage paintings, uh, one of which uh, is right here. So, the most fantastic thing was that they came with their shapes, with their dimensions, and their colours. All I had to do was, I noted them down and I tried to remember them as much as possible. And then I have a page here in which I take the five centimetres in the book and I magnify it to whatever size I was working with. This is a two metres forty, this is about two eleven, and so I magnified it and then with a ratio magnified the other length just to get the correct sizes. So I have some, some maths I'm working out over here. And then I started painting, and some of them were more successful than, than others, uh, but I thought it was fantastic because they just came. So this whole project led me to think about a couple of things. Firstly, I don't think that, I think that ideas can easily get in the way of art. So you can have this clever thought, or a thought you think is clever, at least I can, and if I follow that, I fuck up the piece, I ruin it. So if I say, oh, then I could see a face over there, it's me trying to make sense of something and trying to fit something within a framework which I already have. And I think that's a, a frankly, a, 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 just a very reductionist, very boring way of making art. And I don't think I've been able to make anything good by doing that. So following my intuition and following impulses, that's been really good. And that's how this came, it was an impulse. Now, if I think about uh, the metaphysics behind, or the theory behind these paintings, I can see that it can become quite interesting. First thing, uh, which a collector mentioned to me while I was telling her about this, uh, she mentioned Goethe's Farbenlehre, so his, his, his Goethe's theory, theories on colour, uh, and how they retorted against Newtonian colour theory uh, by saying that not only was there uh, light was light uh, the, the thing that could fractalize colours but also within shadow these colours could fractalize. I don't even know if fractalize is a word. Either way um, I'm sure there's something there which I could pick up and, and, and theorize about. I'm afraid my reading hasn't been that in depth. But the second thing it made me think about was really what's going on here. It's a harmony, a dance, a communication between nature in its most primal, the sun, and man human, the eye, the windows to the soul. The sun printed, quite literally, left an imprint in my retina, in my eye, which was then projected onto my eyelid. So I guess it's a negative, like, a, like the way a photograph is made. This projection was then met by my intuition saying, okay, this must be taken from here in the eye to here onto a canvas. <coughs> and so there are many steps here. So the sun to the eye, the eye to the eyelid, the eyelid, well, in a way to the brain, but the eyelid then to a physical piece of canvas. And so I thought this was a fascinating project. Um, and it's making me think about colour differently. But it's also making me think about photography and art. Because that's something that camera cannot capture. Cameras can capture other things tremendously well. But that is something which we've all seen. And that's why I think these resonate. Is you've seen them, you, you, you recognize it, because we've all looked at the sun, closed our eyes, and had the imprint in our eye, and we've seen it. 
but it's not something usually depicted by a camera. So there's this weird niche, this weird sort of an unexplored area, and it makes me real, really, <coughs> it makes me really have faith in painting. So one of the most fascinating things for me is when people explain my paintings to me. They'll say, well, I see a very sexual painting, I see sperm, I see romance, I see whatever it is, or I see, I see a hand grabbing someone, I see two figures dancing. Uh, one of the interpretations was two souls walking through into infinity. And so I find all of this stuff fascinating. And so I'm not here to reduce anything. That is to say, I'm not here to say what any of these paintings mean. I'm merely explaining the process, because I think it's pretty interesting, and sharing some thoughts on nature printing and then being printed. So I guess that's some, some thoughts behind it. There are some metaphysical suggestions there, and just the story of how it came to be. So one thing I find interesting too, is that I took the very bedsheet on which I was lying, and cuddling, and where the idea came to me, or well, the idea, where the vision came, and I took it and I stretched it across a canvas, and I used that for, for this painting here. And so, perhaps there is a certain sexuality in the paintings, perhaps not. I think it's all up to interpretation. But really what I'm trying to say is I had a lot of fun painting these.